her missing something. I don't know. Your timelines are consistent and tight, Daniel. I know he did it. You know he did it. The entire courtroom knows he did it. Call your husband. We're gonna be working late tonight. We'll have dinner over at my place and we'll go over it all again. Got it. Oh, hey, listen, I'm gonna be calling Brooke to let her know that Jackie's coming over for dinner tonight. Can you run by the office and get the notes that I dictated earlier this week? You didn't forget about tonight's big fundraiser for your campaign, did you? It's at your house. I did forget. Reason number 29, why you're the best secretary ever. I just don't see how I can be there. Okay, call Jackie. Tell her to meet me at the office instead, and could you find us some dinner? Not pizza, something good. She's gonna be working overtime on this. I'll square it with Brooke and the guests. All right. Thanks. starting to think I wasn't going to get any help out of you. Something about the seaside air. I could just lay in bed all day. Mm. What you making, half sis? Dip tray. Mm. Is in their dip already coming? One in every group. <laughs> Speaking of, where's the hubby? Oh, uh, he's at work as usual. He'll get home later. Between the caseload he's carrying and running for Senate, he's either in a courtroom or on a stump. Either way, giving speeches. You guys OK? Um, hey, do you mind if you cut these for me? Yeah. We're fine. We just haven't seen each other much lately. Now, uh, would you mind taking care of the rest of this? I have to go into my senator's wife costume. Hmm. Sure. Are we making a sauce bechamel or maybe a beurre blanc? Mm, ranch. It's in the fridge. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Sandwich. Evie, you're a guest here. You shouldn't be serving. <laughs> this is the McHenry household. If you stay long enough, you're going to be cleaning toilets. Trust me, bye. Oh, I have a Oh, I like the new color. Thank you. I finished it just in time to drive before the party. Mm, wow, that looks nice. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, I laid out a new suit for you, so I'm gonna hold down the fort while you change and freshen up. Um, you didn't get my message. I can't stay broke. <laughs> oh, this is a tough case. I need to get this conviction. I have to. Daniel, this is your fundraising party. No, I know. I'll Honey. make a short appearance for the guests. They'll understand. Hey, Evie! Hey, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know you got in late last night, and I didn't get a oh, chance Oh, you know to what? That's you. okay. Come in. Let's mingle. Catch up. Let's uh, for the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, but I was telling them. I got cross again tomorrow. Okay. Well, you've got to eat, so why don't you go on in there and get a cucumber sandwich? I made it myself. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Mm. I'll see you in there. Uh, hey, cheer up. I'm here. You don't just be like old times. Mm, I hope not. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. How are you? Hey, how are you? Thank you for coming. Oh. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I do appreciate it. And thank you for supporting my efforts to be the next senator from the great state of Georgia. Here, here. I must regrettably say that. I cannot stay. I'm in the middle of a huge case right now. I've spent a year working on getting all the evidence and the witness together, and I must get this conviction. Please see this as an example of the integrity and the work ethic that I will bring to Washington. 
So please enjoy the food and enjoy the conversation. And again, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's why I'm voting for that. Hey, I gotta go. Please don't go. go. Listen, please don't. I have to. Look, it might be late, so you don't have to wait up. Okay. What? I need a date night. As soon as I can, you and I will go somewhere special. Okay. I gotta go. Butter, light butter, maybe butter, extra movie butter, sad butter, fat butter, low fat butter, low calorie butter, peanut butter. I don't even know what to choose. Hmm. I'm gonna meet you at checkout. Have a corn? See ya. Personally, I like the regular butter better. Why mess with perfection? It's broke, right? Yeah. <laughs> we went to college together. Georgia Southern. Oh, I was only there as a freshman. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you were definitely unforgettable. Okay. I'm Tyler. Tyler Griffin. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I, I don't recall. Hey, I, I have someone waiting for me. I gotta go. <laughs> you, were, you were pretty popular. I guess you wouldn't remember me. But it's really good to see you again. Thanks. Take care. Who was that guy? I don't know. Claims that we went to college together. Really? Mm -hmm. He was totally trying to pick you up. Cause you still got it. Go on. Seriously. You have a guy that cute. Flirt with you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm, appreciate that. Yeah. Miss Foster, just one last time. As you and Mr. Gibson entered the room, you stated that there was another man running away from the house. Please describe the man. Uh, it was hard to see, but um, I could tell that he had on a black hoodie and blue jeans. Um, he was kind of tall and thin and lanky. Um, he had boots on, but I never saw his face. Thank you, Ms. Foster. No further questions. You seem pretty confident in that description, Ms. Foster. <laughs> well kind of hard to forget any of it. I mean, it was a horrible event. I want to make sure of the timetable, so I, uh, I hope you don't mind if we go through it again. It's okay. Now, today, Ms. Foster, you stated that you and your boyfriend, Mr. Gibson here, were tanning on the deck. You heard a scuffle, and you came inside at just the right time to see an unknown man running out the front door and the victim lying on the floor dead. That's right. And that was 10 minutes after 3, correct? Yep. You and Mr. Gibson told this to the police over a year ago as well. Is that right? Yes. You even put it into your affidavits. <laughs> yes. But that's not the truth, is it? <laughs> of course it is. Do you know what the penalty is for perjury? Objection, Your Honor. Threatening the witness. Mr. Prosecutor. You're making an accusation. I'm assuming you have a good reason. Overruled. Miss Foster, you were never there. Unless you start telling the truth, Miss Foster, you're going to be going to jail too. For perjury and as an accessory to murder. Your Honor, you stated that you and Mr. Gibson were tanning on the deck. The murder took place at 10 minutes after 3 in the afternoon. When you look at the layout of the house, the front door of the house faces west, which means 
The sun would have been on the other side of the house at the time of the murder and not on the deck where you claim to be tanning. Maybe... I... Oh, oh, no, Miss Foster. You said it to this court and to the police that you were tanning. You both said it. I could never forget any of it. It was such a horrible event. Perjury, Miss Foster. This is the only opportunity to save yourself. wasn't there. He called and asked me to come over. He said that the guy was never going to give him his fair share. But he, he was dead when I got there. And then I called the police. Your Honor, I uh, need a recess to confer with my client. Granted. Also, Your Honor, I'd like to ask permission to speak with you in your chamber, along with Mr. McHenry, of course. I think that would be wise. From my view as lead prosecutor, I have seen spools of red tape that make getting swift trials and convictions difficult in cases just like this one. As Senator, I plan to work with my counterparts to remove these obstacles and get the courts moving. Now, if you excuse me, please, no more questions today. Thank you. If you could just follow me, please. You got him. Well, you know, didn't take him too long to change his plea. She was his alibi. <laughs> so I was thinking a, a long dinner, the two of us. Maybe a romantic stroll on the moonlight on the beach. <laughs> I would love that, but I can't. I gotta be in Atlanta tomorrow. Oh. I gotta speak at a businessman's luncheon. And then my schedule is just one speech after another for the next several days. In fact, uh, I know it's sudden, but I was actually thinking of leaving tonight. That way I can get a good night's sleep and I won't have to wake up early and drive all day. Well, how about when you get back? Absolutely. I can't seem to make up my mind. And you know how this works. Not much longer. I promise. I gotta go. Let me. You working already? Yeah, I thought I would do a little networking for the campaign before you made it down. Hey, um, if you want some coffee, and then there's some berry creamers in the fridge. Oh, coffee? How I love thee. Let me count the creamers. So are we hanging out at the beach again today, or are we going to do something with a little more excitement? Well, I was thinking, what if we went shopping? Oh, that'd be fun. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. What's that? Evie, come here. <laughs> Do you remember the guy that I met in the grocery store? Yeah. He just found me on the social site. Yes, he did. <laughs> Golly, he's even more gorgeous than his picture. It was great seeing you again yesterday. What a blast from the past. <laughs> I'd love it if you join me this afternoon at River Street Inn for some drinks and some nostalgic talk. Uh-huh. We're still going. I heard that's what happened. Please. It, it is. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because I'm not going. Oh, come on. You would have so much fun. Well, then why don't you go? Oh, I can't. Why? I'm house sitting. For you. Evie, you, you really think I want to spend time talking about those days? That was a long time ago. Yeah, but it's, it's not long enough. Those were some crazy, scary times. I know they were. And I'm not about to waste my day discussing them. Okay. Okay? Okay. You know what? Why don't we go down to the city market for lunch? Okay. That sounds fun. 
Can we mess with the tourists? <laughs> sure. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. Cool. We can go shopping for a while before you meet the thrill for drinks at four. Evie. Mm -hmm. I haven't accepted his invitation. Mm. You just did. Thank you later. Love you. Oh, it. <laughs> that was good. Do you need anything else? No, no, thank you. We're great. Well, I commend you on your courage. For what? of her approaching a woman in a grocery store. Well, it, it's not like I didn't know you. So you say, but, okay, what if you've been wrong? And what's life without a little risk? If I hadn't taken the risk, I wouldn't have this opportunity to renew an old acquaintance. Okay, well, it's just something I wouldn't do. Well, I'm sure you've done it before. Mm -mm. We all have, you know? I mean, maybe you catch a passing glimpse of someone and they look familiar. Maybe you call out a name. Or maybe you do nothing. And you let them continue on because you're not sure if it was the person that you thought it was. Or maybe you're afraid of drumming up an old memory that is best left forgotten. Okay. So all of you got. Tell me. Are you sure we went to school together? I have no memory. Okay, fine. And if I don't know who you are, you tell me. All right, well, I'm, I'm from Buford, South Carolina. I went to college for one year, as you know, um, and I'm a wife of six years. Okay. We've got the facts. Now, tell me. Who are you? I want to know. This is like 20 questions. I want to know. Okay. All right. Tell me. Um, I like long walks on the beach. Puppies. Oh, and um, I pray for world peace. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, come on. You can do better than that. Oh, Seriously. Simple. I highly doubt that. All right, okay, um... Not what you are, but who you are. I like to read Jane Austen books. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, I like to watch Children's Crown and Peach. Okay. <laughs> That's good. What else? I like to cook. <laughs> Simple, run of the mill, it's just... <laughs> Now, why do I get the feeling that there's so much more behind those beautiful eyes? <laughs> and not one bit of it is run of the mill. Beautiful eyes? Well, they what first grabbed my attention. And then I saw that they belonged to you. <laughs> Can I have a glass of wine now, too? <laughs> Absolutely. Waiter. Taking a movie. Met the new target today. Okay. <sighs> wow. Uh, who is he? Tell me about him. What are we going to do? We ain't going to do nothing. This one's not for you. 
It's a woman, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing to tell. Is she pretty? You worried about something? Who is she? Nothing to tell. I ever caught you with another woman. Oh, you do what? Huh? I couldn't handle it, you know? I'd, I'd kill before I let somebody else have you. Yeah, I know. I know. Thank you. He was charming and nice, and we had a wonderful time. And that's it. Okay? Nothing more. You're gonna see him again? I know you're not. Not by a long shot. You may have gotten Daddy's eyes, but not his morals. Thanks. So Daniel's gonna be a senator. Am I gonna have to start calling you Mrs. Senator? How about Mrs. Miserable? Really? Why? Most people would kill for that. Think of all the parties. I just don't see it as a reason to uproot us and to move us away from here. It's not that far away. Plus, it's kind of like an adventure. All the history. Mmm, history of derailed marriages, horrible scandals. I mean, really, how do people get themselves into all that trouble? You are way overthinking this. I'm comfortable here. Well, I know you guys didn't come here to hear me tell stupid jokes and stuff like that. You came here and paid a lot of money for steak and chicken so that you could hear from the next senator of this great state of Georgia, Mr. Daniel McHenry. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for coming here tonight. Good evening. going to be standing there. Well, I was just enjoying the view. <laughs> I grew up here. Being at school was an hour away from the coast. It was the longest that I've ever been away. <laughs> the school is the closest I've ever been. Yeah. Until now. It's beautiful. It's the best comfort I can find. <laughs> so what happened to you at school? As I remember, it had something to do with your roommate? The word around campus was... People said that she OD'd. Hey, come on, it, it's in the past. Why are you bringing this up? It's, it's not easy to talk about. I know it was hard on all of us. It's just, you know, we were friends. I, I, I still think about it sometimes, is all. Okay. Not too many people knew what happened. Is this really what you want to talk about? Where did you go? Why did you have to leave? Brooke, you were missed. I had to get away. <laughs> she, she and I were best friends. We went to college together. And when we 
showed up, we saw the drinking and drugging, and we thought that's the norm. And we got caught up. On the weekends, and then it became daily. We became consumed, and one night at a, at a party, we were drinking. And I got us some really good stuff. It was stronger than either one of us ever had. I, uh, I took a hit and then I gave her the drugs. She died. I lived. And so I had to leave school. And, um, I ended up checking myself into rehab. And I got clean. And then I met Daniel and started life as a new person. <laughs> so what about you? Tell me, <laughs> did you <laughs> graduate school? I bounced around for a little while. See, I'm... I'm one of those people that's better than most in just about anything that I do, but not ever really good enough to stand out. Well, I got jack of all trades, master of none. I've continued for a while, and eventually I found myself asking, what's wrong with me? Why am I so limited? It's like there's this ceiling, mm -hmm. and I just can't seem to break through it. You know, the problem is, is that I've hit it so many times that I can see when I'm getting close. That <laughs> seems about right. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> so? So? How about that walk on the beach? Uh, <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. Daniel's gonna be home. Ah, ah, ceiling. Have to be so close. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Oh, but I thought that you and Daniel were doing something. We are. Take a look at that. Some new events added to schedule. Won't be home until late Sunday night. I'll call later to explain. What's there to explain? Campaign me. Campaign me. <gasps> Campaign! <laughs> Let's go to the beach. if I want to. Oh, gosh. Look at how beautiful this ocean is. Normal, quiet, consistent. Well, hello, Mary Melancholy. What's getting into you? Tyler. Started to talk about old school days. Tyler? Times have you seen him since you guys went for drinks? Every day since Daniel left. <laughs> what? It's just for lunch, coffee. I mean, I know that he wants more, but. Mm -mm. Okay, but when I set that up, <clears throat> I mean, everyone is entitled to a little harmless diversion every now and then. I get that. But I mean, I never intended for it like to go on. Have you guys kissed? Brooke. All right, just on his cheek. Brooke. What? It was just his cheek. Right there. Seriously. Seriously. Mm. Cute. Cute. That's like scratching a puppy behind his ear. You will never get rid of him. Wow. 
You know, Dad... Oh, started down a dangerous path when he kissed your mother. And that started off just innocently as co-workers talking after work. But, Brooke, there is something very different about sharing glasses of wine and deep conversations with a man you feel attracted to. And if he's attracted to you, too... Let's just say that is a line you do not want to cross. Okay, fine. Do you understand? I do. I no understand. kissing. No kissing. Okay. All right. I'll make sure I draw that line. Make that boundary clear. Pinky swear. I cleared my head and I I decided that I'm actually happy with the way that things are um, and that I have a wonderful husband and again I didn't want to muddle it up. Look, Brooke. Listen, Evie's here. I have to get going. Come on, Brooke. Look, if I, I did something else. <laughs> that was Tyler. I had no idea how I was gonna end it with him. You mean end end? You broke it off? I did. How'd it go? Here's your mail. I tried to explain that I had this momentary lapse of judgment, lost my head, and that it's your fault, got me in this situation. Okay. Daniel's coming home tonight, and I'm really excited. We're gonna have this romantic dinner together, just the two of us. You're right. Mm -hmm. Oh, brush. Join yeah. me in. Paint brushes up. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> okay. You get the little one, I get the big one. <laughs> wanted was a happy, normal life. The reason that I fell in love with Daniel is because I saw my future with him. He was my hero. Tyler wouldn't do this to me. What? wife kind. I sent her a text. I told her I would make it up to her, Evie. Oh, my bad. I'm so sorry. You sent a text. Did you spell everything out or did you use abbreviations? Does it matter? <sighs> no, no, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? You're a great prosecutor, Daniel. Probably going to be a great senator, too. Right now, you're a lousy husband. Brooke is really struggling, and she needs her hero. And he's stuck in some phone booth somewhere. Have I been that bad? You tell me. You missed this, among many other things. Daniel, my sister really loves you. And I hate to see her hurt. Her. 
Look, I know I've been gone a lot lately, but it's only been to make our lives better. Successful. And I thought that's what we both wanted. Where is she? It's funny. I've never appreciated the allure of the ocean. Until now. Soothing sounds of the waves. Moonlight, glistening in the water. <laughs> and a soft, gentle breeze. And it's so much more than shared with a beautiful woman. You don't have to go home, do you? I'm gonna be there. feel wrong to me. Oh, no, I, I left my husband. I just got angry. It's a stupid decision. One of many I made lately. You'll be back. No, 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 I won't be back. No matter what he's done, I, I can't do this. Putting career ahead of you, is he? Huh, Mr. Family Values. You know what? It's OK. It's all right. I've got all I need until you come back. Tyler, I'm not coming back. I'm sorry. Not for what you thought I did. But for what I did do. Whatever you've done is done. It's in the past. So let's just start over. I have abandoned you too much lately. I've let my career in this campaign create a gap between us that never should have happened. I'm sorry. I should never have taken you for granted. No husband should ever do that. I, I can't imagine my life without you, Brooke. Taking a few days off from everything, even the campaign. We made it. Yeah. I'm pregnant. I'm gonna be a dad. I'm gonna. You. So the whole time you were trying. Oh, <laughs> I am <laughs> such an idiot. You were trying. I. I I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> it's 
is how it's supposed to be. I'm so happy we're gonna be a family. How is she? Fine. Why are you being so cold? She walked away from me, remember? She's happy, content, and pregnant. Leave her alone. Pregnant. This just keeps getting better and better. Okay, so we both agree on Abigail. Mm -hmm. If it's a girl, I like Abigail. It's a I great name. But just in case, if it's a boy, okay. I like Daniel Jr. <laughs> you know? You're serious? Why not? <laughs> Daniel Jr. sounds like a race car driver. Uh, all right, okay. Oh, okay. What, what about Dylan? Dylan? I think Dylan is a great name. That is a good name. Yeah. You know, though, when he goes to school, they might shorten Dylan to Dill, and then he would be called yeah. a like Dill, Dill, Dill pickle. pickle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna work. Fine. All right. All right. I'm a little bit empty here. Do you want some more? No, I'm good. All right. I'll be back in just a second. You keep brainstorming. It's gotta come up. I still like Daniel Jr. though, by the way. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll be back in a minute. Aww. Hello, Brooke. I missed you. I hear you're pregnant. Tyler. Oh, there's no need for any heartfelt goodbyes. You don't have to lay me down easy. I'll be fine. Why are you being so cold? We have something we need to discuss. Listen. Tyler, I, I, I'm so sorry. I just had... Yes. Are you saying that you killed your roommate? And I came at the tracks. never said that. You were tape recording our conversations? We, you manipulated that. That's not at all what I said. You need me back here tonight on the beach. And then we'll discuss my terms. I told you you'd be back. What do you want? What do I want? Money, power, position, success. I guess it boils down to what every man really wants. To be respected. Madison, Tyler, I'm sorry if you're angry at me. This just wasn't the right time for you <laughs> Did you me. still think this is about some form of jealousy? A broken heart? No, oh, this has always been about your Daniel. Mm. And when I play this tape, your husband is finished. You say you checked yourself into rehab. Now tell me, trust me, are you still using? It's the best comfort I can find. <laughs> that, that, that's not true. But it doesn't matter. All it takes is a little doubt in people's minds. And he's finished. Here's the deal. You're gonna give me $100,000 cash, and I'm gonna give you the tape free and clear. If you don't pay, then I'm going to release the tape to every news station, newspaper, magazine, or a whack job with a few blog followers as a well-written story with the audio to back it up. Does that sound like a deal? I gotta find a new trade. This is getting too easy, you know? <laughs> Lonely wife. She needs attention, I give it to her, and she gives me everything I want. Does that sound like a deal? You don't pay, and I play this tape, your husband is finished.
do we got so far, besides the girlfriend? Not a lot of detail, nothing more than what I've told you already. Okay. I'd be absolutely certain, though. Yeah. I'm sorry, there's just no other possibilities. Okay. Get the report together, and then I'll come by in the morning to take a look at it. You got it. Thanks, Jackie. Sure. I, uh, I'm afraid I have some bad news. There's been a murder. A guy named Tyler Griffin. They found him on the beach this morning. And they've arrested his girlfriend. A domestic dispute, most likely. But I have to go in tomorrow morning to look at the indictment report. Don't take this one. Brooke, I have to. It's my job. Please, don't take this, please. Look, I know I promised you I'd take a few days off, but it's just for an hour or so in the morning, and then I'm all yours. The case is not going to go to arraignment for a few days. Why don't you try and go get some sleep? I'll take care of things down here, and then I'll come up later to check on you. I promise I'm not backing out of anything. I'm staying right here with you. You'd be downstairs eating a big continental breakfast for two. You can do that now. Are you okay? Rookie, what's wrong? Rookie, is it the baby? Where's Daniel? It's not the baby. What is it? Daniel's at his office. Tyler was murdered two days ago. What? Who did it? Oh, Amy, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I thought he was interested in me. And all along, he was recording our conversations, and he, he, he was doctoring them up, and he wanted to blackmail me with them. All he wanted to do was to ruin Daniel. That's all he wanted to do. Does Daniel know? No. Are you going to tell him? No, I can't. I can't tell him. It will ruin Daniel. Arrested this other woman. I don't know if it's a roommate or a girlfriend. I don't know who it is, but I can't let somebody else go to jail for something that I did. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. You know, Tyler bragged about doing this before, right? Yes, gotta have a trail, right? What if I try to find some sort of information to prove what kind of man he was? I try to help the defense's case. You think that would work? That's what I'm gonna do. I know it's weak, but it's all that I got. You. Are you sure this one's for you? Yep, quarter pointed. She's just so young. She's she's just a kid, really. I just do right by your client. Always. Hey, uh, speaking of kid, I'm gonna be a dad. Really? Huh. Wow. Do you need a walker soon? <laughs> I might need a babysitter though. Next on the docket. The People versus Amber Kelly and the charge of murder in the first degree of Mr. Tyler Griffin. Do you understand these charges? Yes, sir. But I didn't do it. What's the defendant plea? Not guilty, Your Honor. Mr. McHenry. She was seen kneeling over Mr. Griffin's body with a blood-soaked piece of driftwood in her hand. A witness spotted her, she dropped the driftwood, and then she ran. It was in the early morning light, Your Honor. She would have been backlit by the rising sun. We also have an eyewitness that states that she saw a different woman at the scene. At the time of her arrest, the police found clothes with blotches of Mr. Griffin's blood on them. Mr. Griffin's blood under her fingernails and splinters from the driftwood 
buried in the palm of her hand, Your Honor. That's circumstantial evidence that shows that she was at the scene. It does not show that she committed the crime. That sounds like a good argument for the trial. The defendant is remanded. really the best thing to be doing looking up articles well yeah i mean how do we know he actually wrote any what if all his victims paid him off mm. that's possible i guess hey it's the best thing i could think of right now i mean daniel would start this way i've seen him do it a dozen times i swear he probably searched out our family like this before he proposed <laughs> means he must have married you out of pity that would be him a hero What if we look up that woman's name? Amber Kelly. Okay. You know, you still haven't told me what happened. I, uh, I hit him with a piece of driftwood. I didn't mean to, he, just came to grab at me and I I reacted. I... Brooke, why don't you go to Daniel with that? Or go to the police? I can't go to Daniel. That would ruin him. It would ruin our family. But it wasn't planned. It was a piece of driftwood. It wasn't like it was a gun. It doesn't matter what the weapon is. You can't unpull the trigger. Maybe not. <sighs> but you can change your name. Hmm? Look, I can't find Amber Kelly anywhere, but Kelly Amber shows up all over the place. According to the article, he was caught consorting with her. Is that a crime? Not necessarily a crime, but certainly not something that you'd want your wife to find out about. And when you're a public figure mm -hmm. running for re-election, it puts just enough doubt in everyone's mind to ruin a career. Our life. Article byline, Ty Griffin. What now? Okay. We find the widow, and then we plan a road trip. Juliet, what a great name. Are you a native of Savannah? Yes, sir. There's a famous Juliet from Savannah, right? Yes, sir. Juliet Gordon Lowe. She's the founder of the Girl Scouts. Yes, that's right. Uh, now, please, Juliet, in your own words, tell the court what you saw that morning. I went in for the early morning shift. It was about five or so. I went out onto the deck to dust off the sand off the tables that usually blows in overnight. And what did you see? I saw a woman. Her. She was standing over that man. He was all beat up. Now, are you sure it was the defendant? Because the defense is certain that you couldn't possibly see her. Yes, I'm sure. Was there plenty of light for you to see? Yes, sir, there was. From the sunrise, right? No, sir. It was pre-sunrise, but false dawn, you know? Yes. Your witness. <clears throat> so you say that there was uh, plenty of light. But the early morning light can create harsh shadows, right? You're looking down, right? Could you just made a mistake? I mean, could have been someone with a similar build or hair color? Um... The police showed you a picture of my client and asked if that was the woman in the photo. You did not pick her out of the lineup, right? Yes, that's right. So was right. it possible that you inadvertently blended that shadowy face on the beach with the picture that was shown to you? Um, no further questions, Your Honor.
What do you want? Uh, Mrs. Connors? Yes. We're here to talk about your husband. He's dead. I know, which makes this even more difficult. I need to talk with you about Tyler Griffin and Kelly Amber. I don't want to talk about that train. Oh! <laughs> Listen, please. I'm really in trouble. Tyler Griffin is the reason. Come in. Um, have a seat. I I haven't had guests in a while, so I'm afraid I can't offer you anything. Oh, that's okay. So thank okay. you for seeing us. Thank you. I apologize about your uh, wrist. No. It's worth it for me to be able to talk with you. I'm Brooke McHenry, Daniel McHenry's wife. And, um... Tyler Griffin is now after my family. I realize that this is going to be difficult for you. My husband committed suicide after the alleged affair. He never could forgive himself. That girl and reporter drained the life right out of him. Out of us. He was a good man. I want you to know that first. He went out one night. Guy's night out, you know? She was the waitress. They started running into each other at places around town and soon became friends. She took her time and slowly seduced him, or so they claim. My husband maintained his innocence until he couldn't take it anymore. Tyler Griffin showed up at our house one day with photos. Photos of the two of them together at different places. He said he would get rid of them if we paid him off. We finally decided to pay him. But he released them anyway, a month later. The man is ruthless. I want you to know, this isn't just about the money. That man came to destroy. I'm not gonna let him do this to my family. I think he already has. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you haven't seen Daniel in like a week. Brooke, there is a trial going on. What if it comes out that you were seeing Tyler? Wouldn't it just be better to tell somebody first? No. <sighs> you don't like the dinner? You know, I've slaved over it all day. It was tough making a decision, too. Hand tossed. Deep dish, crispy, cheese in the middle. And then, all the toppings. I really had a good time today. I wish you could have been with me, bro. I'm sorry. What were you saying? I thought this is what you wanted. All day it's 
like you've been someplace else or you want to be someplace else. Daniel, I'm sorry. I just didn't sleep very well last night. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Overwhelmed? Must be hormones. got to work. I think we found some good information to show Josh what kind of lowlife Tyler was. Ooh, I still can't believe that I'm rooting against Daniel, but he's got to lose this case. She's got to be found not guilty. I just don't know if this is the best way to handle this. What do you mean, the best way to handle this? If you remember, you're the one who got me into this. I know. I know. No one would ever argue that I'm the responsible one. No one would ever argue that I make the best decisions in the family. I get that. This this shouldn't be happening to you. God knows this sort of thing should only happen to me. If I could trade places with you, I would do it in a heartbeat. But I can't. Brooke, I just want the good daughter to make the right decision. Then print it and put it in the envelope. That's the right decision. Okay, back to court. the case going? I didn't even realize you knew that I was working on a case. You know, maybe if we were to spend a little more time together recently, Brooke, I could have told you a little more. But as it is right now, I can tell you this, that I'm winning. Defense, call your first witness. Counselor? Counselor? Gentlemen. Uh, your Honor, defense calls Miss Brenda Mills. Place your hand on the Bible, ma'am. I know, I've seen the shows. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Please be seated. Miss Mills. Hi. I'm Miss Mills. You contacted me and stated you had seen a woman earlier in the evening walking toward the victim. Yes, I did. Well, you did what? You contacted me, um, you saw a woman walk toward the victim or both? Both. Was that woman the defendant? Oh, no, not in the least. She's much too young. Okay. Miss Mills, I want you to be sure about this. Are you absolutely sure that it was not my client? Absolutely. Thank you. I don't know what you're doing. I don't need your help. Uh, Mrs. Mills, why were you out so late? Well, I was out walking my papillon. He's getting a bit older now and needs to go more often. Right. I, uh, I hate when that happens. Um, could you please describe for me the woman that you saw in a little more detail? Well, she was, she was in a white shirt with a blue 
skirt. That's that's pretty normal. How tall was she? Hair color? Well, that's hard to say. It was a bit dark out, except for the light coming from the cafe. And the hair was a sandy blonde, brown hair, brownish. Height, build. Well, you know, like her. There. Oh, really? It, miss, it, miss, could you, uh, could you stay standing there for just a moment, please? Thank you. Um, I'd say she's about the same height and build as the defendant. Um, hair color, both sort of sandy. Wouldn't you say so, Mrs. Mills? I guess it is possible. Thank you. Yeah, we can make that happen. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'll be there in about an hour. Yeah. Okay, bye.
Well, at least you don't get the same thing every night. Variety is good. I don't mean to pry, but don't you think you should be at home? I'm sure the food is much better. Honestly? I don't know. I've tried. I really have, but... She's been out with her sister, sitting behind her computer or whatever, even when I'm there. It's like anything is preferable to being with me. I'm just not sure I can make her happy anymore. Ever since I started working here, you've had that sign up on the wall. Let's not get tired of doing good, because in time we'll have a harvest if we don't give up. You put that there during the tough times. Isn't this just as important? You're right. As usual. Guys, what a glorious day the Lord's made. Amen? Amen. All right, so this morning I'm talking to you about faith. Faith doesn't keep you from troubled times. It gets you through those times. Allowing God to manage your issues, well, that is faith. Trying to manage your own issues, well, that's unfaithfulness. And it'll set you up for failure. startled me. What was it, my approach or my looks? <laughs> I thought you might come back one day. I remember how you used to be. You know, wild times. You know, when I was a kid, I would look at people at church and think, what a bunch of stiffs. You know? Let loose, people. Yeah. Made a lot of Sunday school teachers rethink their calling. I can imagine. But lately I've been rethinking me. I let loose. And I overstepped. And I've caused some problems for some people I really love. Shouldn't you have some wise words or quote scripture or something? Well, the fact that you're here uh, thinking through those things means you're looking in the right direction. So I can just sit here, look good, and take all the credit. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> McHenry, hi. I, I need to talk to you. Uh, I probably shouldn't be seen speaking to the prosecutors. I'm going to be back in court. Yeah, yeah. I, um, things aren't going very well, right? Daniel's good. Mm -hmm. Have you received the information provided? You mean about Griffin's past? Yes. How do you know about that? Uh, have, have you been using it? No, it's not really been helpful. Okay. <laughs> so what is he's a scumbag. Big deal. He's dead. Is it admissible? Yes, it's admissible. What's your point? Well, then I don't understand what the problem is. The people, the jury, they need to know who Tyler Griffin was. How can you set up a proper defense without telling them who he was? Excuse me. But what are you not telling What are you not telling me?
Looking for your watch, Counselor? I'm, I'm very sorry, Your Honor. Uh, if the court will indulge me, I realize we're set to begin final arguments today. I would like to call one final witness to the stand. Why? Uh, character witness, Your Honor. Proceed. I'd like to call Miss uh, Miss Brooke McHenry. <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm doing the best for my client. Uh, uh, wait. Now wait. I object, Your Honor. On what grounds? She wasn't even on the witness list. You know who she is? I don't even know why she's involved. Well, you should have thought about that before you agreed to a new witness. Both of you approach. Well, Counsel, why is she here? I believe she has the knowledge of the victim to help shed some light on the character of the defendant, Your Honor. He didn't tell me he was going to call her. He doesn't have to, you know that. Objection denied. Proceed, Counselor. Continue. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. <clears throat> Miss McHenry, for the uh, clarity of the jury, you are the wife of prosecuting attorney, Mr. Daniel McHenry. Yes. Since this trial began, you've been sending me research articles and notes about the victim. Yes, I have. The notes that you've been sending, they've, they've all been anonymous in, in, until today. You've come across some interesting information, Ms. McHenry. Could you please tell the court? Tyler Griffin was a scoundrel. He was a lowlife who only wanted to see others fall. It, it, it made him feel good to see lives in turmoil. Objection. Speculation. Uh, Your Honor, please let her complete her sentence. Overruled. Continue. Miss McHenry, why would you say that? What proof do you have? Well, he was a writer, but he didn't report facts. He fabricated lies. He and... Miss Kelly, they, they lured a prominent judge into an affair. The affair never happened, but he took photos designed to give the public the perception that he did. And, and then he blackmailed the judge and his wife and then released the photos and the story even after they paid him off. I mean, what type of character does that tell you who Tyler is? The judge took his life because of it. Tyler Griffin is a liar and a cheat of the worst kind. Thank you, Ms. McHenry. Your witness. Judge, I move that all of Mrs. Brooke McHenry's testimony be stricken from the records. All she has provided is hearsay gossip with no substantiation of her claims. As of now, testimony stands. You're welcome to cross-examine the witness to uh, prove your premise. Brooke. The fact that Mr. Griffin is a despicable man is not on trial here. The fact that she killed him is. I know that you're compassionate. But he yeah. hurt a lot of people. You know, made him feel good about himself to see others suffer. Again, that's a horrible character trait in a man, but he's not on trial here. She is. You, you said it yourself. She assisted him in a scam. Miss Amber Kelly has hidden those facts during this trial. Why? Because she's guilty, right? She knows she set up the judge and continue to live with Mr. Griffin afterward. You're attempting to save this woman by telling us how horrible a man the victim was while using a crime they committed together to do it. She's not on trial here because she lived with a malcontent and she's not on trial because she assisted him in his evil deed. She's on trial for murdering the man. I don't know why she's even here. Why don't you ask her yourself? 
I don't know why she's involved. No. You know. She's been sending me you know who she is. You have no idea what is going on here. Daniel, don't do this. You know who she is. Don't do this. You know. Please. That's my wife up there. Everyone, come to order. Oh, you know who she is. is. You have <laughs> Did you just admit to the murder of Mr. Tyler Griffin? Don't answer that. I'm sorry. I have to. No, I didn't know. No, he didn't know. I'm so sorry. I met Tyler six months ago. And he was charming and I enjoyed his attention. And we went out for dinners and drinks while you were campaigning. It was a nice distraction. But nothing physical ever happened. And I realized later, much too late, that I didn't want it to go any further and that it needed to stop. But I was stupid. I thought he was interested in me. All he wanted to do was to take you down. And he produced these doctor tapes of me answering questions, the things that he never asked. And the things that he was saying that he claimed that I was saying would have ruined your future. It would have ruined our future. And I wasn't gonna let that happen. So, so that night I met him on the beach. I wanted money. And I, oh, I just smashed the player and he tried to stop me and instead I hit him in the head with this driftwood and he fell down and he was bleeding and he wasn't moving. It just ruined everything for us. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's not how he died. I killed him. What? I'm not gonna let this guy do this to somebody else. You were right. We set that judge up. I was working as a waitress at a club and just barely getting by. One night, Tyler came in. He was sweet. He made me laugh a lot. He said if I could get close to the judge, we could make a lot of money. And I was desperate. He didn't tell me what would happen next. After my picture was in the papers, nobody would hire me. I was forced to stay with him. Tyler knew that and he'd never let me forget. When I saw what he was doing to you, I just, I couldn't let him do it again. To someone else. He was just coming to when I arrived. Too weak to do anything. I killed him. Not you. How can you be sure? Testimony. You stated you hit him once. It, the police and the coroner testified to multiple contusions. It was me. I just couldn't take it anymore. You did the right thing. But everything that I try to prevent has been anyways. She's going to jail. Daniel's ruined. I, I probably lost him. And I uh, even pushed you away. Forgive me. Okay. This should be the other way around. It's like everything that I try to control 
has just fallen apart. <laughs> Maybe you should stop trying to control everything. And trust him. a done deal. Crash and burn. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Hey, hey. Just to let you know, the judge declared a mistrial. There's so much confusion. He didn't really know what it was going to do to the jury. It means you're going to have to go through it all over again. But um, mm. if you do, you'll have the best attorney the state can offer. Abigail.